Hello and welcome to A New Loaf About. Today I'm on the A698 between Coldstream and Berwick and I'm crossing the River Till on this rather unattractive and unimportant bridge. But the bridge to the left of me is most certainly not. Twizel Bridge. This bridge was built in 1511 and in those days bridges were built either by large families or by the church. This bridge was built by the Selby family whose seat was nearby in Twizel Castle. With the castle being built high up on the embankment you can see why the Selbys built the bridge where it was. They would get a good view of all the comings and goings over the River Till. On the other side of the bridges, there's a super five mile walk beside the till that goes past Twizel Mill, Castle Heaton, and all the way down to the lovely Northumbrian village of Eto. I'm so old, I can remember coming over this bridge in a Mark I Escort. But as a piece of architecture, I think it sits beautifully in the landscape, unlike the bridge that replaced it. Shortly after it was built, Twizel Bridge was used by the English army on their way to Flodden to defeat the Scots. Gone off Twizel Bridge now. <laughs> so I've parked at the bridge car park and through this gate is the start of the river walk. The river till floods quite frequently and it can get quite muddy down there. So I don't know if I've got the correct foot attire, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. A common feature of medieval bridges are the stone ashlar ribs, which Ellen described at the time as being of stone bow but great and strong. This is one of only 16 medieval bridges that remain intact in the UK, partly because it's been closed to traffic since 1983. This whole area is called Twizel, or Twizel Estate. And the origins of the word Twizel mean fork in the river, which we're going to see in a minute. This is the River Till, and we've got the bridge behind us, and high up on the rocks here is Twizel Castle. And it's quite a commanding position overlooking the bridge and the River Till. But the estate was originally owned by Sir Francis Blake, the first baronet of Twizel. And he was responsible for rebuilding the castle and many of the follies that we might see today on this walk. magnificent tree but this river floods quite a lot as I said and you can see the sediment in this little part of the tree here from when it is flooded in the past you can see how high up that is it 
this is a great path because during the lockdown you've really got to drive to get here and it's not really too far from both Berwick and Coldstream but it's far enough to be able to get away from everybody and isolate on a beautiful riverside walk. And here, a little diversion called for here. This is the well hidden St Cuthbert's Viaduct. It's called St Cuthbert's because of the farm that it sits on. I'll leave, even although it's in the Twizel Estate, but it seems to be doing some sort of works here. I think there's been a tree growing in the parapet there. But I don't fancy working up there. It's well hidden in the valley here. And this line used to carry the branch line from Berwick upon Tweed through to Kelso. But you could also branch off at Cornhill and go all the way down to Annick if you want. But you can still actually walk on this line and you can virtually walk all the way down to Annick on it. There's something about walking along a dark still river that I find a bit unnerving. I just want to jump in. So if the video continues, you know I've not done it. However, managed to resist the day. But I, I think I get that off my mum. And she was never keen on walking by rivers and canals. But um, I remember once, I, I don't know how she done it, she managed to walk over the Ponte Zilt aqueduct in Wales. It's either in Wales or Cheshire. But the Twizel Estate has got a few follies in it, built by Sir Francis Blake. And there's one over here, I don't know if you can just see it through the trees. And it's actually an old church. And I don't know why you build a folly in an old church in the middle of a field. But apparently there's one or two of these follies on the estate. So once we come round here, you can see why the estate is called Twizel because this is where the till meets the tweed and it's kind of like a fork in the river. And the main part of the tweed is just over the other side of this island. And this is a sort of branch off and the till actually flows into it at a kind of angle. And from here, it just flows on a little bit down there and joins the main body of the tweed. Obeying the sign as I should. So the till joins a little subsidiary of the tweed, which eventually joins the main body of the tweed at the other end of this island. And we're actually in the northernmost part of Northumberland here in England. And on the other side, we have Scotland. Coming upon Twizel Gardens here, and it's hard to find anything written down about these, but I believe they would be built when the castle was altered. And if you look at the size of the stones, it would certainly sort of verify that. But as I said, it's hard to find any evidence written down, and I've googled it quite extensively. But maybe, you know, it was built when the castle was renovated and then carried on as a commercial venture afterwards, perhaps. These actually look like little pigsties. Sort of classic low roof, single door entrance. 
got more of the old properties here. That could be a urinal. This may be a potting shed. And there's evidence of people having lived here. The brick may have been added at a later date. And certainly looking at the sash and case, case windows, I mean they're sort of 20th century definitely. But it's always sad to see gardens in a state of disrepair. And in the day, there was probably lots of people working here. And here we have the remains of Twizel Castle. The castle was originally a medieval tower house, but was destroyed by a Scottish army in 1496. Then, from 1770, Sir Francis Blake, he worked to recreate the castle as a Gothic revival style mansion, designed by local architect James Nesbitt. Not the Irish actor, incidentally. <laughs> but he also oversaw the building of nearby Paxton House. Originally it was a five-storey building but never completed and in the 19th century parts of the castle were demolished to provide stone for the new mansion being built at Tillmouth Park. So all around the castle there are mounds which show signs of settlement and this was probably workers connected with the castle and on the land and in the gardens but nowadays are occupied by these guys. It's such a shame that it went into a state of disrepair but at the time, this was happening all over the land and the new house at Tilmouth Park would have all the mod cons, I suppose, so this one had to go. So that's just done the two rivers, the two bridges, the castle, I'm going to head off back down to the car now and I hope you've liked the video. If you have, thumbs up, please subscribe and we'll see you soon.